Hey friends, over 60% of you are listening to me right now on an Apple product, iPhone, iPad, iTunes. I need your help. The truth is, Apple will make this podcast more discoverable to new listeners the more reviews it has. So I'm here asking you to take a moment and leave a review. If you've gained any value from this podcast, the greatest thing you can do for it, besides spreading the word and telling friends, is leaving a review. It's real simple. If you're on your phone, head over to my podcast page within the Apple Podcast app and leave a review. Or, if you're on a computer, you can head over to my podcast page within the iTunes app. That's it. That's all I ask. And if you have other podcasts that you love, do them a favor and do the same for them. It'll make their day. Now let's get this podcast started already. This is episode number six. I can't believe we're still going, man, going strong. Um, thank you to everybody for listening to the podcast, checking it out each and every week. Uh, big thanks to everyone for checking out last week's show with my cousin, Larry Mullins. By far the biggest download yet. Do appreciate it. I feel like we're, I feel like we're gaining some traction feels like it's getting strong uh and larry had a lot of cool stories to share collectively larry and i both we had some really cool stories to share on this podcast and i really felt like it was the best one i've done yet so now i gotta try to follow it up with uh well number one no guests this week it's just me so there's that but a lot's happened i you know i wanted to do an intro last week, but I felt like the, the podcast was enough. Like it was already like an hour and a half, just about, or close to an hour and a half hour 20. And I felt like maybe we should just like, it should be like its own standalone podcast. Like, you know, some of the other ones with where I've had interviews, I've, I've done like something in the front of the back. And I just felt like maybe this one didn't need that. Like this one could stand on its own. But I'm talking with some cool people, and we've got a couple of other cool guests in the future lined up. So there's that. Also, you know, quick plugs, try to get them at the beginning of the end. There is one additional way to support this podcast now, and I'll tell you all about it. But first, Amazon. Check out Amazon. You probably shop there all the time. But uh, if you were to go to my website, which you probably were going to listen to this podcast, go on to garyspodcast.com. There's a, there's a link in the menu button, uh, in the menu bar on the far right, it says shop on Amazon. Or if you want to bypass my website altogether, and I would hope that you wouldn't, but if you wanted to somehow bypass it altogether, you could go to garyspodcast.com slash Amazon, it just forwards you to the homepage of Amazon. I'm an affiliate with Amazon. Doesn't cost you a penny more. It just literally tells Amazon that I sent you instead of you going to just their homepage. And they say, well, Gary sent him. Let's throw him a couple of, you know, a couple of pennies for his troubles. So, you know, if enough of you do that, it adds up. I've seen a few people doing it already. I do appreciate that. Um, So if you shop on Amazon anywhere near regularly, you can just bookmark it, garyspodcast.com slash Amazon. Make that a bookmark instead of your Amazon bookmark. You just click that, and then boom, it takes you right to Amazon under my referral link. Also, if you need a Lyft, that's right, partnered up with Lyft. If you need a Lyft anywhere, let me save you a few bucks. Maybe you want to go out to the bar, and you're like, man, you know, I don't want to, and I would never recommend this, you know, do not drink and drive, please Um, get a ride before you do that. Absolutely. I would tell you that if you wanted to, to get a ride to the bar or a ride home from the bar, all you got to do is download the Lyft app. This is, this is for new customers only. So if you've taken a lift, unfortunately I can't help you. Um, you're already in their system. You could create a new account potentially, but 
if you need a ride, take a Lyft. It's an app on your phone. You download the app, you create an account, and use the promo code Gary's Podcast. Okay? Use the promo code Gary's Podcast, all one word, and it will save you. I think it's $5 right now. I think it changes, though. So be on the lookout for this because I've seen it where sometimes it might be $10, sometimes it might be only $5. And I don't even mean to say only $5 because if you're just like, if you live a few miles away from like a bar or something like that, this coupon could potentially pay for damn near your entire trip. So give it a look, download the Lyft app, and use the promo code Gary's Podcast to save a few bucks on your first ride with Lyft. <clears throat> Be sure to check it out. And also, if you, for some reason, are listening to this and you somehow forget the promo code, which is really easy to remember, it's Gary's Podcast. You can also go to my website, garyspodcast.com. I have referral links on how you can use the same code, whether you want to be... Um, a rider, you want to get a ride from Lyft, or if you want to drive with Lyft, it's the same code. Matter of fact, if you're listening to me right now, because I'm getting ready to to talk about my experience with driving for Lyft, let me tell you, there is a couple bucks to be made. I don't know that this is lucrative as a full-time gig, but as a part-time gig, abso-freaking-lutely you can make some money on Lyft if you've got a, a you know a new-ish car within the last 10 years. Um, you can absolutely get in with Lyft. Use the same promo code. The link is on my website, garyspodcast.com, menu bar. I put all this affiliate stuff on the far right, out of the way of the content and if you use my promo code Gary's podcast, I think the the promo right now is a four hundred and seventy dollar sign on bonus. You have to complete X amount of rides. You'll have to read the fine print on the website. I don't have it offhand, but you can get a four hundred seventy dollar. That's what it is right now. Now again, these things change all the time, so it may only be two hundred dollars next time. So. Check it out. Use the promo code Gary's Podcast if you want to sign up and drive for Lyft. Let your boy here hook you up with a good deal, whether you're riding or you're driving. It doesn't really matter. But uh, either way, you're going to get some money back in your pocket. I like to I like to think of it like this. If you're going to be a rider with Lyft, if you're going to get a ride, save the couple of bucks with this coupon, Gary's Podcast, the promo code. And take that couple bucks and buy you a drink. Get your drink on, folks. That's what it's all about. All right. Plugs out of the way. Let's start the podcast. And that is a big part of this podcast today is what it's like to drive for Lyft um, and or Uber. You know, I I am on both platforms, as many people are. I know they kind of swear against that, you know, to... It's kind of like it's not there's nothing there's no rules that say that you you have to be only one. I'm sure they would prefer that you're only signed up to one and you know, I don't know what happened, you know, what they would say if they knew, you know, I would tell them. I would just fly out and say, "Yeah, I sign up for both. If one is slow, I'm going to want to get on the other one." What I really like about it is meeting new people. I I enjoy interacting with new people. I met a couple while driving this weekend, actually. They were from California. One was from L.A. Uh, that was the guy, and the girl was from San Diego, which is a place where I used to live. And we just had, like, this really cool, like, 20 to 25-minute conversation as I was driving them to a restaurant. Couldn't have been any nicer of people that I've taken. And I've taken a lot of nice people over this weekend and the weekend before um, I worked like almost 12 hours on Sunday and I had just a ton of fun meeting people, but I interacted with this couple. They were very, very nice. They said they were going to check out this podcast. So if you guys are listening, what is up? Um, thank you for checking out my podcast, but I really, I really enjoy it. Um, driving around on the road. I this is something I do anyway. It sounds crazy. Okay? It sounds very crazy when I say this, but 
I actually will sometimes just get in my car. Like I don't have a set place to go and I will literally just start driving around. Okay. I'll go. Yeah. A lot of times I like to go to like shopping malls and just walk around. And this is good for the steps. We've got an exercise update incoming here shortly. Um, but I like to walk around. I like to window shop a lot. This is something I do quite frequently. Um, but I like to just drive my car around town and go to different stores or what have you. But the point is I'm in my car every weekend going somewhere, whether I'm going to a mall or whatever, or if I'm going to King's dominion, and I walk around there too. I'm always in that car and I am putting miles on the car. So the thought is, you know, my wife and I are, are getting ready to move. And the thought is, you know, what if I use these miles I'm putting on my car to generate an extra income? It's not that my job, my day job doesn't pay well. I have a very good paying, you know, day job, regular job. I love my job. But this is more of kind of let's, you know, let's make this move easier. Let's make it as easy as possible, right? You know, I make a decent living doing my day my day job, but it's like, why put all of that into my move when I could make some extra income, meet new people, be on the road, which I want to be out on the road anyway, and make some extra income. So that way it's a nice, um, you know, landing point. We could make this move stress-free, right? Makes sense to me. And then when I get done with that, then, you know, I'm going to start paying off some of this debt I have. And when I get done with that, I'm still going to drive for Uber and Lyft because then it's just play money at that point. And that is the plan. You know, I am going through a lot in life, you know, whether it be the debt or whatever and the weight loss and all this stuff. But I always try to make I always try to find the most positive way to get through it. Previously, you know, I'd get, I would get depressed. I would shut down. I would get angry. Um, a lot of different emotions would happen when these kind of things would come up. But now it's like, you know, there's a lot of serious stuff going on in my life, but I just try to figure out the absolute best way to get through it, to stay, you know, to maintain a positive state of mind. And that is key, folks. Let me tell you, whatever you're going through in your life, that is key to, you know, obviously assess what you got going on, figure out what it is, what the issues are. And just work through it without completely stressing yourself out because that really is going to do nothing for you. What's going to happen? You're going to get stressed. You're going to be upset. You're going to say, I don't know what to do. I can't figure out my way. Life shuts down on you. You shut down and it's not productive. Believe me when I tell you that it's not productive. So I want all my listeners just to find the most positive outcome you can find, figure out the best way to get there and you can get through it. So Uber and Lyft, this was my answer. You know, there are other jobs I could have picked up. I could have been a pizza delivery guy. You you notice the car theme here. Um, I could have, you know, got a job in some retail stuff, but I don't want to do that like that. You know, Uber it's, it's in Lyft. It's a different, it's a different story. It's, um, it's totally different. I mean, it's still customer facing. You're still dealing with people, which I don't want to say that that's the reason why I'm staying out of like getting like a part-time retail job or something like that. But it's just like, I'm kind of too old for that. Like, you know, a retail job, there's not a lot of income possibilities. It's very like, this is your hourly rate. This is what you're going to get. Okay. Um, with Uber and Lyft, it's like, I really, it's up to me. And I'm averaging anywhere from $25 to $30 an hour, okay? So I can do do this whenever I want. I can can get off of work, my day job, get off of work, say, you know what, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't got to go to the gym today. I think I'm going to pick up a couple of rides, maybe make 50 to 100 bucks in a couple of hours. Boom. That's what I like. I like the flexibility. I like to be able to cut on the app and do as I please in terms of working when I want to work, working on my terms, this kind of helps you uh, do that and accomplish that. And that is so awesome. There's so much power in that when you have the control to say, this is when I want to work. 
It's like, yes, it makes all the sense in the world to get a second job, and I will, but I'm doing it on my terms. And this was my answer. This was my response to that. And it's really paying off, not just monetarily, but from a mental mindset, it's paying off intensely. I mean, I'm so happy, and I I don't even dread getting in the car. And everybody that I've encountered has been so cool. Like, I will get up early in the morning at the ass crack of dawn because this is what I do with my day job anyway. I get up early, I go to work. Nothing changes here. It's just Saturday and Sunday, I'm still getting up early. But I'll give you another piece of information. Every weekend, very rarely can I ever sleep in. It doesn't happen very often, okay? So I'm up at the crack of dawn anyway. So let's let's look at the situation. I'm up at the crack of dawn anyway. I'm usually driving around in my car on the weekends anyway. Is there a good reason not to do this? The wear and tear on your car? Guess what? I was putting these miles on my car anyway. It's true. Um, I don't see a reason not to. I think it's a good, a good option. I think it's definitely a good, strong option. Not to mention, I do most of my driving in the city of Washington, D.C. I live in Virginia, but I do most of my driving in D.C. A few main reasons. Some of them obvious, some of them maybe not. Number one, that's where all the people are. Like, you can get drive, you can get rides in Virginia, but you're going to be waiting a little bit longer. Instead of getting pinged like every two to three minutes, if not less, in Washington, I'm getting pings like ten to every ten to fifteen minutes, which you know, you don't want to be driving around what they call dead miles around in your car waiting to get a ping. I've got you know, in DC, I've got the damn thing going off while I still got somebody in the car. That's the demand. There's a lot of demand. And it just bang, bang, bang. When I feel like I want to stop, when I feel like I'm done for the day, I have to like be so quick on the button to turn my app offline because that's how many pings I'm getting. Like, If I'm not getting a ping while I'm in the middle of a ride, I'm getting a ping the moment I drop somebody off, rate them, and say complete the trip. That's how crazy it is in D.C. There is so much business and this is early in the day because quite frankly i'm just not comfortable with driving in the nighttime for a few reasons number one and this should be the most obvious i don't want drunk people in my car true story i've never had a drunk person in my car on lyft or uber and i don't want to start now Although I did have a guy fart in my car on Saturday, and that was really weird, and it stunk, and I had to Febreze the hell out of my car when this guy got out, and of course I waited till I turn, I waited till I turned the corner, so he wouldn't see me, and I just Febreze the hell out of it. I've also got, you know, like I, you know, late at night, like you don't know who's getting in your car, like it could be some crazy drunk, it could be some killer, like you have no idea, it could be just a robber, like. That's serious stuff. I don't want that kind of stuff in my car. This is my car. (laughs) I pay the bill on this. These drunk people ain't paying the bill on my car. So, you know, I I just try to think of, uh, of the best way to do this. And that is the best way. Driving early. And a lot of these people are just getting their day started. Um, And a lot of them, the other reason why I like to drive in D.C. is the short radius, you know, that you drive in because people will, you know, only need a ride like two miles, maybe three miles away tops. I think the longest ride in DC I have was five miles. Now you tell me what's the harm. I mean, what is the harm going to be in that? These short run little trips, two miles here, three miles here, maybe a five mile here. Yeah. They'll add up over time, but by that time I'm going to be sitting here, uh, fat, happy, and rich, and well, maybe not fat, but happy and rich, and I'll just buy a new car at that point. I mean, if I'm going to wear it out, I mean, let's let's make the car work a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
we're not just driving the car around for fun now. Now we're making money with the car. That's key. Making money with that car. So overall, the first two weeks were positive, very positive. I have a five-star rating across both platforms. I've been called a very friendly young man. I've been called inspirational. I've been called all these things. It blows my mind. It's very humbling to read this stuff. I mean, it makes my day when you get that kind of feedback, when people take the time to leave a rating and they say, man, you know, Gary was awesome. I appreciate that kind of stuff. But I also get these kind of ratings because of how I treat people when they're in my car. Number one, the first thing before their whole body is even in the car, good morning or good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm Gary. Welcome. Um, you know, how is your day going? Um, can I get you some more air conditioning in the back seat? Cause it's very hot. It was very hot over the last couple of weeks and it's all about gauging your passenger. Like some people will want to talk your ear off. And as you know, I host a podcast. I love to talk. If you know me in my personal life and not just as a podcast person, you know I run my mouth all of the time, and sometimes I never shut up. I just keep on talking. So for those kind of people, they love that because they want a conversation. They want a dialogue with me, and that's awesome. Then you have some people that, you know, they just decide they want to just sit there on their phone. They want to just relax, a quiet ride, and I'm happy to give them that too. I think doing the podcast interviewing people over the years has played to a strength where I'm able to figure out, does this person want to talk or do they not want to talk? I took one couple from old town or from Mount Vernon, George Washington's house all the way to DC by nationals park, long ride, friendly couple. They just didn't seem like they wanted to talk. They were probably at George Washington's house all day. They probably wore out. They were going back to their hotel. They just wanted to relax. They didn't really want, some chatty Kathy in the car. So, you know what? I kept my mouth shut. I chimed in maybe once or twice. Hey, you having a good day? Yep. You know, short answers. That's the other thing too. They give you a short answer. They don't really want to talk. If you ask them a question and they give you a short answer and then they elaborate a little more, then you got them. Maybe they want to talk. Um, but these things are key. Also driving early get you airport runs. Sometimes when I'm on my way to DC, I still leave the app on when I'm in Virginia because once in a while I get a ping from like old town, Alexandria, somebody going to Reagan. I even had one guy over the weekend going all the way to Dulles, which was a sweet payday. Let me tell you. So driving early does pay off. I'll never sit in the car at an airport waiting to pick somebody up that. I think that's just silly. They have these airport queues. And you can tap a button to enter this queue. And I think that that's just so stupid. I mean, maybe there's money in it. Maybe. But I just don't. <clears throat> excuse me. I just don't see like. Because most of the time when you look at the airport queue. There is no less than like 35 to 40 cars in this queue. Like you're going to be sitting there for a while as these cars are going to pick people up. I just think that's silly. I'd rather go to somewhere like Old Town or right in D.C. and where I know the pings are going to be hot and heavy. Yeah, they pay shorter amounts in D.C., you know, these one or two miles, maybe five bucks, eight bucks. You know, they're short. But if you get enough of those, dude, they add up. Let me tell you, they add up for real. So day or week one and two, I didn't give I didn't get to give you guys the update last week, but. Um, you know, week one and two of Uber and Lyft. Awesome. I'm totally all about it. Um, I worked most of this weekend and I'll be back working every weekend for the rest of the, uh, rest of the, the rest of the foreseeable, uh, future just cause it's so cool. I mean, I like being out there on the road, meeting people. It's a lot of fun. So again, to put a bow on it, if you think that you are similar to me in the sense of you like to meet new people you know, you like to be out and about anyway. Maybe you have a good paying job and you just want some like play money or you want to help paying or you want help paying some bills that you don't want to put a, such a stranglehold on your normal income. Consider driving for Lyft or Uber. And if you do, I have referral codes on my website. And with Lyft, I have a very specific code, Gary's Podcast, which is going to get you 
a sign-up bonus once you complete X amount of rides. Just make sure you read the fine print. Uh, and if you've already signed up to be a driver, it doesn't count. So you got to be a brand new guy who hasn't done it yet. Uh, but consider it. It's a lot of fun. I like it. Um, we're gonna we're not gonna go super long on the podcast today, just because I am I am I am recording this on Fourth of July. I was gonna delay it one day, but I decided you know let's just let's get a podcast in there. Um, so I figured you know let's you know let's not miss a week. I don't like I don't want to miss a week. That's uh, never the goal. I never want to miss a week. So. Uh, the weight loss. Let's talk about the weight loss. That's the next big thing. It's actually the featured image of this podcast. You will see what I like to call a face to face. I think that's what they hashtag this kind of stuff on the Instagrams and things like that. But it's the cover image on the website. You can look at on the left my photo, which is from November of 2016. And the photo on the right was taken today, the day I record this podcast, July 4th. And you can see the difference. So basically, long story short, I hit my my first like major milestone goal, which originally I thought it was going to be 50 pounds. But the real milestone was hitting that 300 pound mark because it was the point where I could cut the hair and shave the beard. And so I've done both of these things. I shaved the beard first, and then I went today and I got the hair cut. I actually met a nice lady who cut my hair. She called herself Storm. I had to ask her, was that her legal name, and check her ID because it sounded like just some really cool stage name, but that was her name. And she was uh, really cool. You know, she was like, I think I'm feeling this with your hair. And, you know, she cut it and she did a good job. It looks good. Um, so the picture reflects that that you're seeing on the on the website. But. So when I lost 72 pounds, when I hit 300 or just below 300, I was going to shave the big, monstrous, grizzly beard. That was going to be the first thing to come off. And then I was going to cut my hair. And just because they always say, like, when you lose a lot of weight, the first place you see it is in your face. So my logic was I'm going to grow out my beard. I already had a beard when I started to begin with, but I was like, I'm going to grow out my beard over the next however long. And I'm going to just, I'm just not going to cut my hair. I'm not going to allow myself to cut my hair or my beard until I hit this number, because it's going to incentivize me to hit that number. And it took me 101 days in the gym to hit that number. So that is, that's pretty wild. But nonetheless, it was cool to be able to hit that number. But the celebration, it's not, it's no celebration, folks. When I lose weight, when I hit a milestone, I don't celebrate. I get my ass back to work in the gym, working out. And that is always the the plan. It's never... It's never, let's just, you know, celebrate and give up for a week. It is, I get my ass back to work that same day. I was in the gym today. I didn't make it to the gym yesterday because I was just like, you know, I'm just going to give myself a day. But I got in the gym, worked out today. I've switched my schedule around. I think I told this on a previous podcast, but let's give you the very absolute quick, shortest, brief version of it. And that is, I used to work out. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I walk, jog, run. And Sunday was my weightlifting day. As I may have already previously stated, I have now switched that to where Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday are now my walk, run, jog days. And Monday is my weightlifting day. And a lot of times I'm adding in like a bonus Saturday What this allows me to do is it allows me to go really hard right before my weigh-in so that I can maximize the result because I want that number to go down every week. I don't like it when it retains the number, the same number as the week before, and I sure as hell don't like it when the number goes back up. So I'm trying to keep that number at least going down by one pound every single week. So I I will absolutely continue on this schedule because I think that it's working out so well for me and that is the plan going forward and Monday it, it you know cheat day is also Monday now too because now I can kind of like eat like crap 
for one day, but then I'm right back in the gym and I'm going hard again. So that's the plan. And, you know, I think we're going to, we're going to wrap this up at a half an hour, you know, just kind of a quicker, a quick hit podcast. We'll come back next week with a little more long form, but I just want to kind of wrap this thing up as just thanking everybody for your support, not just of the podcast, but also the weight loss, all the great, you know, feedback I've gotten from people, whether it be on the podcast or the weight loss or whatever, just all the, the good positive energy that you guys are sending my way. I love it. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It really helps me to continue to just go hard every day in life. And I think that, you know, that's a good way to live is to go hard. Um, so again, kind of in closing, Gary's podcast.com slash Amazon, or go to my website, Gary's podcast.com while you're checking out my content and click that link on the right that says shop on Amazon. It's a referral link. It just takes you to the front of Amazon, but it has my code embedded in the link, which basically tells Amazon that I sent you, you don't pay anything different. You're, you're shopping like normal. You're paying the same low prices that you would with Amazon anyway. It's just that they kick a few pennies of the sale over to me as a thank you because I sent you to Amazon. You didn't go yourself. So you can even bookmark this thing to where whenever you click it, I mean, you probably look on your internet browser, you probably have a button that says Amazon, right? You probably don't type amazon.com. You probably just have a button and it just goes right to the front page of Amazon. Take three extra seconds and go into that uh, bookmark and just change it to Gary's podcast.com slash Amazon. Help your boy out. (laughs) Help me out. Um, and then also if, if Amazon's not really your speed, if you want to drive or ride with Lyft, Use my promo code, Gary's Podcast. If you want to sign up to drive, right now the current bonus is like 470 bucks. Sign up bonus. You complete X amount of rides and get paid. Meet some cool people. And yeah, you're putting some miles on your car, but you're making some money with that. Tell you what, that's a good way to go. And if you want to ride, you know, if you want to get drunk at the bar, it's all good, man. Don't even worry about it. Take a few bucks that you're going to save by using my promo code Gary's podcast and get your drink on, ladies and gentlemen. Just do it safely, responsibly. Do not drink and drive, please. Um, And I also have all these links on my website, Gary's podcast.com. And also, by the way, last week I saw New Kids on the Block Live. They were amazing. I had a good time with that. I know that's kind of an odd thing to throw at the end, but I just just now thought of it and I wanted to include it in the podcast. So you guys know how we end this thing. I tell you every week the same thing and it does not change. Not now, not next week, not ever. Have a good week. Go out and be the best you that you can be. Do kind for others where you can and live life to the fullest, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast, for supporting me and always love the feedback. Keep it coming and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening.